we have an exciting interview with Ben from Livebotic. So without further ado, Ben, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what Livebotic does? For sure. Thanks, Jeremy and Matt for having me. Um, my name is Ben Waters. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Wybotic. Wybotic is a startup that spun out of the University of Washington about two years ago. And we commercialized some of the wireless power technology that we've been researching um, in the electrical engineering department at UW to create wireless charging and battery intelligence solutions for robotics and drones. So our technology allows for robots and drones to drive up to or land on top of a charging pad of some sort and autonomously charge without having to physically connect. And that's kind of the first piece of our system. And the second piece is when you consider power and batteries across an entire fleet of robots or drones, it's a little different than how we typically think about, you know, plugging your phone overnight and just letting it charge in the same way every night, right? So we analyze power as an optimization parameter for a network of autonomous vehicles and have a lot of software and AI type stuff around how our system does that very effectively. Uh, do you kind of want to tell us what we're looking at here? Yeah, these are two of the two of the circuits that we've we've developed and, and built up here at Wybotic. This larger one is you know what we call our transmitter. So okay. this would be living inside of a drone pad or inside of a, a docking station for a robot yep. connected up to an antenna, and it would be powered from you know directly plugged into the wall or it could be powered from a solar panel if it was going to be living on the roof of a building or mm -hmm. out in a remote field somewhere. Um, it can communicate you know, back remotely to, to whomever would be using the system and it automatically senses when a receiver circuit like the smaller one would come in range of the transmitter which okay. would indicate that the drone or robot is, you know, is approaching or is right, right on point and Essentially, this board connects up and communicates with the robot and its battery. Okay. So we charge the battery in a way that is fully programmable. Um, the robot or someone remotely can control things like how fast you charge. Do you charge all the way up or do you just charge to the point where you can you know, do the next task effectively? And okay. All of that stuff you know, trades off with the overall lifetime of the battery, how often the systems are gonna to need to be maintained and replaced, which is a cost to the companies who right. are main you know, who are who are the service providers for those systems. So we can help with a lot of those things when it comes to optimizing power. So uh, on the topic of optimization here, how uh, efficient or how rather does it compare to uh, your traditional wire charging method? You know, I think wireless versus wired is this thing where question I often get is, well, how much slower is wireless charging than wired? Well, right. that's really a, a misnomer because wireless charging can charge just as fast, if not faster, than wired charging. Right. Uh, the battery is really the thing that limits how fast you can charge. Wireless charging has a couple more of those spots where you have to convert from you know AC to DC, essentially, and vice versa. And so it's, it's always going to be a slightly, you know, a slight reduction in efficiency, but really not by much. It can be our system, you know, end to end can be as high as 70, 80 percent efficiency, which wow. isn't a whole lot lower than, than some of the wired stuff. Um, and then once again, it's totally wireless. So um, I have a, I have a DJI Phantom uh, three. So you're saying that I can simply attach this to my drone and land it somewhere close to this, and it just starts charging. Yep, exactly. That's there's awesome. some there's some antennas and some other components that go along with these things, but but yeah. in essence, that's the idea. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? This one group in particular, Columbia, we did these externships, as they called them, where we had to go into some some industry that was foreign to us. And our goal, even if we knew about technology, our goal is to like do something we knew nothing about, which was like in my case, I had to do like admin work for a dance studio. You know? <laughs> so that was just a new experience in a way for me to come in and understand about culture and how people yeah. get along. 
and I just, you know, at the time I was like, oh, technology, you know, is king and everything, but it's, it's not, frankly. That experience just ingrained in me early on that, that leadership, culture, all these things are equally as important as the business and the technology. Um, when we started Wybotic, you know, I was just as excited about bringing people on and teaching them about the technology that I was so familiar with, having researched it for six years. Yeah. Um, that uh, you know, it was it, that was one of the most exciting pieces for me, and now we've got a team of about ten guys working at Wybotic. Wow. The greatest joy for me is seeing you know them know much more about it than I do, and yeah. having a company who's driving towards the vision that we we all want to achieve. We saw that you recently um, acquired two point five million in funding. Was it April, I believe? Yep. Wow. So. Um, can you kind of comment on you know what that was like, and and um, I guess for other people that are working on their startups right now, what are some of the hurdles and maybe some advice you can share um, about getting funding? Yeah, fundraising um, for the first time in my case, especially from a technical background, is a challenge. Um, it's a slow and more disappointing than you know yeah. than happy process because you get a lot more no's than you you get yeses. Right. Um, but it's one that I really believe being persistent with, sticking to your vision, and believing what you say drives the success. Um, so for us, you know, we I spent a lot of time. I, I can't emphasize enough how important mentorship is, mm -hmm. seeking advice, but. The amount of prep you can do, I think, for just getting into the the process of talking to a lot of investors, trying to raise that money is you just have to kind of do it. Yeah. And once you start doing it, you just have to be so persistent that you establish, you know, what I call pitch mode. When you get into pitch mode, it's like anyone you're talking to, whether it's at work or whether it's you know my wife at home, you're going to be talking about sort of the pitch, and it's just in your it's in your blood you know it's yeah. just this thing Second that you are just, yeah um, and I think you have to get to that point because every conversation you have is different you know when you're talking with an investor they might before you have a chance to say even two words they might ask you a question that <laughs> was your last slide on the deck you know yeah. you're like oh, oh well I could skip but you, you just have to it has to be smooth it has to be you have to know it so well that you can just maneuver and navigate seamlessly and not you know, confuse the story that you've like memorized or something, yeah. right? But don't deviate too much from from the vision. Otherwise, you know, if you if you if you get an inv investor excited about something that's not your core company vision, but maybe you know it'll raise it'll allow you to raise money. You know, that's a tough that's a tough situation to be in because you're setting yourself up for disappointment if you, unless you switch gears and do do right. that, right? So, we really felt in our case like robotics is this new emerging thing, right? There are questions about the timing of the market. You know, is it too early? Are ro when are robots going to be this big thing? Mm -hmm. um, so we really search for people who, and you can't always ask them directly, do you think it's too early for robots? You have to ask questions so that you can infer the answer to that question without them telling you directly. Yeah. Um, so we really looked for partners who, who cared about that, um, who had that vision that we shared and you know, felt like we got a group of really great investors who, who are excited about what we do, excited about the ecosystem of robotics and that we can you know, really contribute to it in a big way. You as the, the founder with the vision, um, how do you see you know, your technology impacting the industry? Um, and you know, maybe you can comment about the timing as well. Yeah, our, you know, our, our vision is fairly simple. You know, and, we essentially just say um, that robots are the heart of a battery and hearts always need help mm -hmm. and that's what we do. Um, so essentially, the, I haven't talked too much about this, but the technology that Wymotic commercialized for the robotics industry started as uh, in research, in the research lab, we were working on wireless power for implanted medical devices particular wow. this artificial heart okay um, so there was this concept of the technology was born from powering hearts and now it's powering the heart of a robot and wow. that kind of a thing so um, you know essentially we yeah we view what we do as a catalyst for the industry so in some sense we need to raise, raise awareness and say hey look there's better ways to charge than having to build your own docks or build your own technology to, to do it work with us and 
you solve the problems that are on your critical path. There are some standards out there, just rules of thumb if you, you know, read around what's a typical size of a round for a hardware company, you know, in an early market doing development, right? right. Well, you're going to need to raise a little bit more than like a software company who just needs some computers to develop an app and get it to market in like three months, right? right? And so that sort of answers that first question for you. We went on the you know bigger side earlier on to have the capital to you know get us through the questions about market timing, the challenging product development with the new technology, right? Um, once we got it in, um, you know for me it was fairly simple. You know we had a little bit of work to do on the sales side and a lot of work to do on the engineering side. So just put it all on the engineering side and then you know there's some natural fixed costs so break it down to the minimal amount of subcategories as you need um, for me that was maybe like four sales and engineering maybe like a couple underneath each of those um, and track it so you know because cash is king when you're when you're in early stage you know you gotta gotta have that otherwise you can't pay people we, we say you know we need to do a few things well when it comes to hiring you know we need to we need to interview well we need to hire well, and we need to welcome well. And in my opinion, the third piece is the most important when it comes to, if you've done those first two good, then welcoming them on, you've got this window of opportunity when someone's new to a company to instill in them the culture and the expectation that you want. So I think the hiring piece is one that you really interview well, hire well, and welcome well, you know, critical pieces. That's a question that I really like to ask is, you know, what are what are some of the most important things you look for in hiring? I always used to ask people, like, what questions do you ask in interviews? But yeah. I realize that's kind of the wrong question to ask mm -hmm. because people who really have done interviews for a long time, they don't really have preset questions mm -hmm. necessarily. They've got a preset thought process. Okay, I know I'm looking for someone who's motivated. I'm looking for someone who's going to be able to handle doing 10 things at once. Um, but I'm not going to ask this person the question, can you do 10 things at once, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to say yes. You know? So you have to ask questions based on their experiences and then keep going, keep pushing. The question I ask the most in interview is, oh, cool, tell me more about that. If you had one piece of advice that you could give an entrepreneur just starting out, um, especially in the tech industry, what would it be? single best piece of advice I could give is, you know, never forget about how important it is to work well and inspire others. Um, I think that leadership, whether you're an engineer who likes to keep his head down and do what he does, or whether you're a CEO or whether you're an intern coming in for, you know, three months out of the summer, right? Um, I think people tend to feel like sometimes they've got these very monotonous jobs that are, you know, not fun and they complain mm -hmm. about it. Or, social media or they complain about it when they go home yeah right that's nobody ever nobody wants to be in a workplace that that is like that right mm -hmm. um so i really feel that the the onus isn't just on the company to create that environment the company can you know do its best to create that but ultimately i think if you're not motivated by the work you're doing then find motivation by being a leader and whether you're an intern inspiring maybe an engineer who is a full-time guy who's down on his job or whatever. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been an intern and I've definitely seen people who don't seem too happy in their full-time jobs. Yeah. You know, you can do simple things like invite them out to lunch, but always, you know, remember that it is always your job to inspire others. It's not just your job to do your job and get your work done. Feel free to reach out to us uh, on our website, www.ybotic.com. Um, we're also on Twitter, at Ybotic, and uh, so either one of those two are best the best spots cool so once again here with uh ben waters in beautiful beautiful seattle it's always like this. um yeah. why botic check it out you got a drone like me it's the way of the future <laughs> um thank you so much for having us um taking the time uh it's been great cool my thank pleasure you.